Friday night. I leapt out of the cab and raced across the lot as fast as I could. Didn't have anything to shield myself from the rain except my hands. I crashed against the door to my place and swiped my wrist against the biomod. Had to do it again when it didn't register my ID. By the time I finally had a roof over my head, I was soaked from head to toe. I took a moment to catch my breath before grabbing a towel from my suitcase. Even though I wouldn't cease to be a Night City resident for another couple of days, I'd already gone ahead and packed up all my things earlier in the day. Didn't know why. Probably because I was still a merc at heart and preferred to be over-prepared rather than under. Once I had one, I went to the bathroom so I wouldn't drip all over the carpet and started drying myself off. As I did, I caught my reflection in the mirror and stopped. The heart of Laguna Bend stared back at me, almost as if it were mocking me. How could I have made such a fucking stupid mistake in front of her wife, no less? Talk about making a bad impression. And what was worse was that there wasn't any way for me to walk it back. They'd seen the panic in my eyes, had heard the quiver in my voice, and in my panic I'd left them with only one inescapable conclusion. That I was head over heels madly in love with her. Which I was. I couldn't deny it any longer, or chalk up my feelings to some nameless infatuation. I loved her. Fuck. Why couldn't I find my way out of this? It wasn't like my pain was special or unique, this kind of shit happened every single day. I was just the latest in a long line of broken hearts, stretching back thousands of years. So, why did it feel like the world was ending, when it clearly wasn't? I had breath in my lungs, blood in my veins, and most importantly, I didn't have a ticking time bomb in my head anymore. Yes, I'd lost every connection I'd had, but it wasn't like I couldn't form new ones. The last few hours were proof of that. So, why couldn't I get over this? Why couldn't I simply change my perception, focus on the good for a change? It suddenly dawned on me that the answer had been staring me in the face all along. Choice. That was the one thing I could control, what I chose to do. Every day for the last month. I'd chosen to mope around and wallow in self-pity as if I had it worse than everyone else. Poor V. She lost her output of six weeks and all she got was a new lease on life. Boo fucking who. So why couldn't I choose otherwise? Why couldn't I just accept that Judy had moved on and it was time for me to do the same? It sounded impossible, yet standing there, staring at the empty vessel before me, it suddenly seemed so simple. I began moving with renewed purpose, stripping out of my clothes and tossing the wet garments on the floor. Once I was naked, I studied myself in the mirror. No chrome, but no scars either. No muscle but no fat. I was undefined. A blank canvas. Just like Judy. A sudden surge of endorphins rushed through me, 
I smiled, the first time I'd smiled by myself in years, and finished drying myself off. I felt a growing sense of accomplishment with my every move, put my wet clothes in the tub to dry out, check, hang my towel over the curtain rod so I could toss it back in my suitcase in the morning, check, get changed into something comfortable, check. By the time I finally got settled in bed, I was on cloud nine. I could hear raised voices from next door. Sounded like a shady deal gone wrong. I tuned it out and listened to the sounds of the night. Rain blasted against the roof, a glass bottle striking the pavement and shattering, sending shards of glass flying across the parking lot. Police sirens wailing in the distance. A crying baby a few doors down. Just a typical night in poverty-stricken Watson, but despite it all, I felt like a million eddies. A tomb. On the surface, that word sounded cold and distant, devoid of any real meaning. After all, look at what had happened with all my other tombs. But the more I thought about it, the more I began to come around to the idea. Judy and I had never actually been friends. We'd simply dived headfirst into our relationship, smacking our heads against the proverbial ground six weeks later. But I had seen firsthand just how much she cared about her friends, the lengths she was willing to go to to help them. Maybe it wouldn't be such a bad thing to have her as a friend after all. Bianca too. Wasn't like they both hadn't made a genuine effort to reach out, that heart-wrenching kiss aside. In fact, even if Judy and I weren't meant to be, which was still a very bitter pill to swallow, it was still a hell of a lot better than the alternative, which was to cut her out of my life completely, just as everyone had already done to me. I would need friends when I touched down in Atlanta, even if they lived elsewhere. It might not be what I wanted, but it was better than what I had. I pulled up Judy's number on my hollow and began to type. Spent the better part of 25 minutes trying to phrase things, deleting entire sentences only to rephrase them and then delete them again. If only writing were easy. Finally, I read back through the wall of text, fixed a few glaring typos here and there. Didn't want to come across as a rambling drunkard. Hey, I hope you got your D&D &D on and you don't read this till morning. If not, <laughs> shit, I'm sorry. Wanted to thank you both for a great night. I know it was weird and I caught you off guard with my ask to meet up again tomorrow. Or today, if you're reading this in the future, which would be now. Sorry, my brain's a mess. <laughs> get it? Also... Thought about what you said about me being a good chum. I really haven't been, but I want to change that. Truth is, I've been wallowing in self-pity for the last month, and it's past time I give myself a swift kick in the ass. I would very much like to be friends with you. Both of you. I like Bianca, and can see why you do too. So yeah. Burns it is. Anyway, sorry to hit you with a wall of text. Just wanted to get this out there while it was still fresh in mind. Hit me up tomorrow when you got a sec, and good luck. Knock those corpos dead. Not literally. Unless. Satisfied, I hit send and waited. Once my hollow had been dormant for a suitable amount of time, I turned off the light and settled into bed. The argument next door had spilled out onto the balcony. There were more voices now, 
badges, judging from the sounds of things. I was just starting to drift off to the domestic ambiance when my hollow buzzed. My pulse raced with a confusing mix of excitement and dread as I brought the screen to my face. Hello, Zs. Don't worry, you didn't wake me. Been too busy worried about tomorrow. Bees out like a light, of course. Oh well. Sleeps for the week anyways. As for the friend stuff, glad I could deliver the boot to your backside. Seriously though, I meant what I said. Would love to keep in touch, V. Life's no good without people in it you can count on. Not sure when things will calm down tomorrow, but I'll dev reach out when they do. Sink or swim, I'm gonna need a stiff drink afterwards. Till then, Chum. Content, I closed my eyes and drowned everything else out, losing myself in the tinny sound of rain striking the roof. My burdens slowly ebbed until only one thing remained. Hope. I was going to be okay. I was actually going to be okay. It suddenly seemed as if there was so much to do. I had to come up with a plan for tomorrow, someplace fun, cheap, where we could kick back and unwind without all the pretentiousness. Would need to grab another outfit from my suitcase, preferably one with pockets this time. Had to pre-check for my flight on Monday, check the job listings in Atlanta to see who was hiring. Don't look now, V, but you just might have the beginnings of a new life. Don't fuck this one up like you did the last one. I opened my mouth to tell Johnny to piss off, but caught myself. Wasn't sure if I would ever get his voice out of my head, but at least he... I was being supportive for a change, and not just a dick all the time. My thoughts grew fragmented and disconnected. My eyes flickered and closed, though I remained vaguely aware of the necklace in my fingers. The memory of that evening came into sharp focus. I could feel myself floating, could see the murky silhouette of the church behind her, could faintly make out the ethereal clanging of church bells echoing in the distance. Happier and more at peace than I'd felt in ages, I drifted off to sleep.